Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and uh, I know this is going to be a bit early, it's going to be out of sync but what can I say, LVO has happened and as usual with LVO we get a few uh, nuggets for what's to come in the year. So I hope you will put up with the internet's least favourite channel and We'll see what's going to be coming out. What's to look forward to? So, let's get on with the show. But before we carry on, guys, allow me to state the very obvious fact. I am not going to be covering, covering all the 40k. This is just going to be going over the AOS releases. So, again, let's get on with the show and see what LVO has to offer. First up, guys, a bit of a shock to me at the beginning, but the more I think about this, this was probably a straightforward call. We've got to have four brand new Grand Alliance Battle Tomes coming out this year. Like I said, I was surprised because these have already been released, but if you think about it, since the first patch was released, it's been such a big change in AOS. Like we've got Malign Sorcery, we've got well, we've got new armies, there's new chambers for order, like we got Night Haunt, and Chaos has had a bit of a revamp. So, it makes sense that these books are coming out if it's going to be about for another year or two. So, I can't wait to see these. When you get your army spread out over a couple of uh, chapters and... Uh, you could do a Grand Ho uh, Grand Alliance match. It's always a spectacle to see because it's great to see what people can mix together from these uh, armies. So, yeah, it's, if I've got a chance, GW, if you're listening, I'd love to get my hand on these uh, these battle tomes when they come out. But, uh, yeah, like I've already said, it makes perfect sense for these guys to come out now because since these have come out, we've had endless spells. And at the moment, not everyone's had uh, their own end of spells, so let's get them all in line now. Let's get a Grand Alliance spell, and it's going to be amazing, because like, where they're law building in, in, in the edition, this is just going to keep adding to it. So I just can't wait to see what's in the box. So if we stop to think about it now, guys, there's four Battle Tomes guaranteed to come out this year as well as the flesh eating calls and skaven that's coming out this weekend are six battle tomes but there's good news because there's going to be a seventh and that seventh is going to be blades of corn again i'm going to have a little gripe here it's probably a little bit selfish i've only just picked up this battle tome on my uh, iphone so I've built my army around that. Now we got news of a new battle tome, which to me feels a little bit redundant because you've they've they've done the the was it the uh, gore bound when they first done AOS, then they did the blades of corn which grouped the demons and. You know the corn cornate army of, of man together and now corner on a third yeah third battle tome which seems a little bit much they're not stormcast eternals but yeah they're on the third book i feel this is this could have waited personally because we all know it's from wrath run rapture there is another army that could have been released now and that is slanish because they've not had one book let alone two or three but who am i to judge i am not a, a gw uh, worker so i can't tell you what's happening behind the scenes perhaps for all i know 
Um, Corn is a really good good uh, earner for him, but nevertheless, um, the information that was given to us is they've reworked how the army is going to be linked together. So I don't know whether it's going to be different ways of summoning from the blood tithe table or if they've got new battle um, battle plans to mix the army together more so it feels a little bit more cohesive because I found it was a little bit jarring to have the demons and the other army mixed together so perhaps this fixes that could have really done without it it could have held off so five battle tomes have been said so far that's a, a lot that's coming out so what's like i said what else are they going to release with this well it's not going to be a release without a new model so let's have a look at them right Probably the least jarring of the new Cone models announced is going to be a redesigned Skull Taker. I don't know about you, but I really prefer this model compared to how he was originally. To me, Skull Taker looked like a kneecap taker because he seemed very short. He felt, seemed very stocky. He was like a demon made out of a dwarf didn't quite feel well blood letterish he it, it didn't feel it didn't feel like you know he was like walking into battle and he was commanding the field it was more like he walked into battle and everyone was you know doing a comedy sketch with him putting their arm out but as you can see they've uh, stretched him out a bit made him more in line with um, other blood letter models and he's just a fantastic sculpt from the armor from the removed amount of skulls because he looks like he's only got a few there he's not covered in them and he just it's a very majestic model like he is summoning his army to run down the uh, the enemy so i can't wait i can't wait to see this model in person it just looks fantastic and from what I can see, it looks like he's standing on a uh, stormcast, uh, a stormcast helm. So the guy means business. He's taking names and kicking ass, which you want for your HQ, and especially a named HQ. So this guy is just a legend already. If he's, I'm gonna hold back from saying he's gonna be on the Le legends in the lunch time because he might have his rules changed so i could go off of stumpy taker and i could be completely wrong within a couple of months so i'm gonna hold back until we actually see this mod it's gonna be amazing but i always say models are amazing i i'm always you know probably gw's biggest fan to be honest when it comes to sculpts but what do you guys think? Do you like it? Do you prefer the old model? Do you, do you not care? Are you more interested in, you know, a Grand Alliance book? Are you more confused about what's going to come in the next pick I'm going to show you? Because, yeah, this bits are going to be a little bit jarring. I know why they've done it, because of, it, because of how AOS is now, because it's like Edition 2, and these things are prevalent but it just seems out of place let me show you what i mean yeah guys and gals soak it in corn has got endless spells this is what i mean this is kind of jarring it just doesn't sit right with me it's corn dislikes spells well, he hates sorcerers. He sees them as weak. It's not honourable on the battlefield. But he's got endless spells. I know they're going to get around it and say these are not endless spells. They are manifestations of the blood god because of all the blood blood that's been spilt on the battle. It's going to be 
something to do with the blood tithe point system because there's no there's no magic in a corn army but as you can see we've got a, well, a bleeding skull we've got a corn symbol floating that seems to be bleeding but the one i'm interested in is the axe and we've all read in battle tomes and in stories where corn has ripped through the veil and have struck an army just out of sheer rage so perhaps this is what it's alluding to perhaps this is going to be a strike from the god himself which could work depending on how how big the model is going to be well how big the model is going to be is probably going to be the size of i would say the purple sun but it's going to be interesting how they get around this one because like i said it just does not sit well if i could have gone the whole edition without having an endless spell it's corn at the end of the day they don't do spells and yet they've got endless spells that you can't call endless spells yeah it's a little bit to get their head around but what do you guys think is does this jar you like it jars me it's well i just don't know what to make of it it's just really confusing right then guys the last bit of aos news is going to be an announcement that they're expanding the story even further the next expansion for aos is called forbidden power not a lot is said about it at the moment um it's um just coming out this year they've said it's going to be the next step it's going to be a way of pushing the story forward because as we know they just build in the law each edition so and each expansion so it's an ever evolving story which makes aos really fascinating i, I find I might be wrong i might be the only one but it's just the fact that it's, it's such a world building game is nothing like feels out of place at the moment because it's like we could be focusing on say nagash at one moment and then it's, it feels like the next bit is when well you've forgotten about the iron jaws over in another realm as they attack fire slayers or something like that it's it's amazing it's like being part of the books so all we know at the moment is the name and it's going to be released this year if i have to hazard a guess i'm going to say it's probably going to be a magic buff possibly get two extra armies out of this if uh, malign sorcery and soul wars was anything to go by it's just really exciting now this this year is just going to be uh, somebody somebody's gonna like you know trip the switch and the bomb's gonna go off and it's gonna be aos everywhere which is gonna be amazing because like i said it's just gonna be a game changer a world changer so this is the one that i will be keeping my eye on because as we know now um Flesh Eater Courts and Skaven are being released now, so we've got nothing to look forward to. Steps in, Forbidden Power. Just amazing. And that, my friends, is everything AOS that was dropped at uh, Las Vegas Open this year. I know I've covered it pretty quickly because, like, everything is just fresh and new and not a lot is being said about it because that gw likes to keep it under wraps but it's not the only aos-esque information that was dropped this is just like the main game part there was an announcement for a brand new side game like um like um underworlds and uh shade spire which is going to be called warcry and that's all we know at the moment guys it's called warcry it's promising to be interesting it's 
from what I can make out from the video that was shown on the community page, it's set at the all points, which we all know is where Arkhan has set up base because he is he he wants to be everywhere. If there's a fight, he wants to be in there. So it's a brand new game set at the all points. And the video sounds like it's Archon's challenge to the realms. So I got the feeling it's going to be a skirmish game. Um, and the only reason I say that is because it's they said in the writer that it's going to take the best bits from Kill Team and Underworlds. So it could be interesting. This could be the AOS version of Kill Teams. So, it's something to look out for. I don't know whether you guys are interested. Perhaps, is a skirmish game better for everybody? Is this is that the, what people can fit in on most weeks? Because like, we've all got jobs. We're gonna do. A, if we don't, if we don't have a job, bills don't get paid. We don't have roof over heads, and we don't get brand new models. So. Perhaps this is better for everybody. Perhaps Warcry is the skirmish game. This is the kill team that everybody wants to pick up and play because all you need is a couple of models and bits of terrain. Who knows? Um, again, it's just speculation at the moment. We don't know exactly what it is. It's just from the creators of Kill Team and Underworld. It's taken the best bits of both and it's set at the old points. Okay, um, it's on the community page, it's on the YouTube channel and it'll be on their Facebook. If you guys can see the video and you can decipher something different from it, please let me know and when we get more information, I will bring it up. But at this point in time, it's just, like I said, purely speculation. I'm guessing it's a skirmish game. And it's, it's just something to look forward to. It's... I just kind of hope it's not like Underworlds because the only thing that puts me off there is just from the way people have spoken about it, it's a lot of card play as well as model play. I can't do the two. So hopefully this is going to be trimming that bit off and it's just going to be, like I said, a skirmish game at its core. So I don't know, more news to come, I suppose. And I know I've given it a bash in just now, saying it's a card game and everything like that. I'm going to end this video on Underworld news. And that news is, the next warband to be released is the Sylvaneth uh, warband. I'm not going to embarrass myself by saying the name, because I can't say it. I, I sound like I'm probably licking sandpaper if I try to say it. So the closest thing to get off me is it's going to be a Sylvan Earth Warband. Right up from the designers have said that this is going to be a unique warband which is going to have its own play style because the models that they've announced are going to be based on Spirit Revenants and Tree Revenants which are agile and durable so it's going to be a very fast well it's going to be fast for these elves it's wood elves at the end of the day it's going to be fast it's going to be tough and then what sets that apart then is it's going to be very magic influenced as well it's going to be probably a lot of magic in this as well so it's going to be a lot to take on board and manage your team so if you like um if you like a challenge if you like if you're you're in a uh, dm wants to play the game uh pick it up and on top of that if you collect silver Earth, they're just amazing models it's i know i know i just i said it's it's a card game but the models are coming out for uh, Underworld is just fantastic. It's they're always worth picking up. 
even if you're just slipping them into your normal army, just one or two models here and there, the detail on them is going to be amazing. And painted right, they're just going to stand out in your army. So there's a lot to look forward to for the AOS side of things. I know there was a lot dropped for 40k, but I'm not going to cover that here because we had an AOS and Blood Bowl channel, so I'm really sorry I'm not going to cover it. That's all you're going to get out of me. Right then everyone, fortunately for you, that is the end of the video. If you've stuck around this long, I want to say thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, give a thumbs up. If you disliked it, well... There's a dislike button there for a reason. Let your voice be, be heard. Tell me down below what you didn't like. Was I not covering enough information for you? You've got to let me know. That way I can learn. I can change things. Make it suitable for everybody. But it's going to be an exciting time for us AUS fans. So stay tuned. And we'll get more information as it drops because we'll be scouring the community pages because it just sounds like it's going to be a lot to uh, lot coming out this year. It's going to be amazing. Right. And on top of that, um, it's going to be a change of plans this weekend because it's going to be two weekend shows I'm going to release. It's a lot to take in this week because we've had the Carrion Empire information drop. And on top of that, they've decided they're going to drop Skaven and Flesh Eater Courts. So, there's going to be two separate videos coming out. One's to cover the Skaven, one's to cover the Flesh Eater Courts. So, because if I chucked into one show, it's going to be massive. If I do into two shows, it's going to be a little bit more bearable. And you can just, if you're only interested in one side, you can listen to one side. If you're not interested, interested you don't even have to listen to either of them. There's your choice. But if you are interested, the only way you are going to find out about these videos is if you uh, if you subscribe. So please subscribe, show your love for the channel. We've also got a Teespring store. So if you want to get your noob on, I can't believe I just said that. If you want to get your noob on and support the channel, head on over to the store. Um, there's a couple of hoodies, a couple of t-shirts, there's a painting t-shirt there, there's even a t uh, cup there for your painting tea, because we all know, best thing about painting is a cup of tea to go with it. We've also got a Patreon and PayPal, so I'm going to shill the channel now, because without you guys, the channel can't grow, the channel can't expand. So. Just watching the videos is more than enough for me, and I greatly appreciate that. But like I said, for the channel to grow, I need your guys' help. Even if it's just like five pence, greatly appreciated. And I will just say thank you for your time, thank you for your patience, because this channel is nothing without you guys. So stay tuned. I'm going to try and cover as much as I can on the next two videos. It's going to be a bit of a bumper weekend because we've just had a lot of stuff dropped on us. So, exciting times, guys. Exciting times. And I hope the sound is a bit clearer now because I picked up my new microphone. Yeah. So, hopefully that'll change. And then, through the week now, I will be trying to get back onto Streamlabs. So we can talk and paint at the same time. So we can all chill and paint together. And that's it now. I'm definitely going to go. I shall see you soon. And oh, what am I going to say? No, I kind of like the tagline. Goodbye from the internet's least favourite AOS channel. Thank you very much.